So, halls and residences in NUS, what's the difference and should you even stay on campus? Let's find out. I would definitely say staying on campus is a very worthwhile experience. I mean, international students, you probably have no choice anyway. Okay, maybe you could rent like a place outside, but for first year especially, I think staying on campus is very worthwhile. You get to meet new people, you get to build a support system for yourself to tie you through all the hard times, the stresses, to have fun together. And everything is much more convenient as well. Your classes, your activities, everything is very in reach and you wouldn't have to think about having to travel every time you have events or project meetings. The travel time, I know from friends that it can get quite long if you're staying in like the more residential areas like Basiris or like Tampanese. So definitely a benefit of staying on campus is how convenient everything is. This video is proudly brought to you by the Malaysian Students League. Though it is definitely applicable to not just Malaysians but international students and Singaporeans who are coming into NUS as well. For Malaysian peeps, join MSL, join their university freshman outreach program coming up before the semester starts. It's a great way to make new friends. There are three types of accommodation in NUS. One is hall, one is RC or residential college, and one is residences. So these are quite different and we'll begin with halls are known to be very commitment heavy. People I know in halls have like seven extracurriculars and this is because it runs by a point system. You need to have a certain number of points that you accumulate from participating in sports, participating in extracurriculars, contributing to the hall. And these points basically guarantee you your next year's stay. So keep in mind, second year's stay for halls are not guaranteed. There are seven different halls in NUS, each with their own different culture and I would say specialty. First up of the lot is Yusuf Hall and Yusuf is known to be a very sporty hall. They consistently top what is known as the inter-hall games every year. So if you're applying to Yusuf, definitely helps if you're very sporty. It is also very conveniently located near Supper Stretch, so watch out for that figure if you go to Yusuf. <laughs> it's where students like to go have meals like Prata, like Nasi Lama, oh, there's some really good Chinese and Thai food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's also very near to FAS, the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences and School of Computing. Next up on the list is Tomasic Hall, which is Yusuf's arch rival in terms of sports and also in terms of location. They're very similar, very sporty people and location-wise, it's right next to Yusuf. So I don't really know what to say about which one is better. I'll leave it up to you. Next up on the list is Kentridge Hall, which is located near the business school and the School of Computing. It is a relatively new hall with only single rooms and it is known for their performing arts culture. Just like how Yusuf and Tomasik are sporty halls and are next to each other, Shiraz is also next to Kentridge and they are known for performing arts, relatively new rooms, Single rooms only, known to be very fun and uh, generally have more of a business crowd because of the location. So next up we have King Edward VII Hall or KE7 Hall. It's located near Dentistry, Med and NUH. So more of a Med crowd here. Though if you guys know Chishun, who is also on YouTube and is Malaysian, she is staying in KE7 so you can check out her videos for how life is like there. Big fan of her. Hi. <laughs> they also have an exclusive tennis court and is also more focused on their performing arts scene. So next up we have Raffles Hall which is very conveniently located in the heart of NUS. It is particularly closer to engineering and SDE, the School of Design and Environment and it's about like a 5 minute walk to U-Town so that's really convenient. They also have more of a performing arts culture particularly in band I think. Yes, so to conclude the 7 halls of NUS we have PGP House which is the newest addition 
it used to be just PGP residences and they broke up. So they broke off and established this new hall. I think it was to address the concern of PGP residences being less communal, so they established the house. I'm really quite envious of how great the facilities are at PGP House since they just renovated. Jumping into residential colleges, residential colleges are different from hall in the sense that there is less of that CCA commitment that we spoke about. There's no point-based system to guarantee you your next year of stay. For RCs, you are guaranteed two years of stay upon admission, but on the condition that you take up the RC modules offered by your college. Each RC will have a different program, so there are three different programs. One is the Ridgeview Residential Program, one is the University Town College Program, and the last is the University Scholarship program. So given that each RC has its own theme and the modules offered are based on this theme, a brief breakdown would be that RVRC is focused on sustainability, CAP is focused on community engagement, RC4 is more on systems thinking, and Tembusu would be focused more on liberal thinking. So I forgot to add that the GE mods in RCs basically replace the requirement for NUS anyway, so don't worry about it, you have to take it anyway. But for USP, it's, it will replace your electives, I think, if I'm not wrong. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Editing Singwei here. I realized I lost a lot of footage, so whatever I spoke about about RCs are kind of gone. And uh, I guess what I need to stress is that the difference between the RBRC program and the Utah College program is the location, first and foremost. RBRC is located in the center of NUS, right opposite Raffles actually, and it's right opposite the University Sports Center, University Health Center, and just central to every single faculty as well, though it's closer to science. and. For U-Town College program, it's in U-Town, so it might be a little bit further from all the other faculties in general. It's definitely more humanities focused, I would say, the U-Town College program and also USP. I find it more humanities focused and more writing based, but definitely check out the website for the detailed course descriptions. Yes. Tembusu is known to be the most competitive RC. Last year itself, it was the only RC to not extend its deadline because there were too many applicants that their vacancies were not able to accommodate. So finally, we have the University Scholars Program and the University Scholars Program is known to be the most rigorous RC program. You are expected to take up 12 modules across your four years in NUS and basically 70% of your time would be your major, 30% would be USP. So you are kind of double majoring in a way in USP. So be prepared to allocate a lot of your time to fulfilling this program. Okay, so editing me is back because I lost footage on residences as well, but thankfully that's just one of them. Residences uh, would just be PGP residence. PGP is near to dentistry and med and NUH. Pretty near KE7 if you recall, as well as PGP House, they're next to each other. So it's very convenient actually, PGP House and PGP Residences, they have access to shared facilities like a mart, cafeteria, etc. PGPR has more of an international crowd from what I know and there's no events like block events or anything like that that you would see in RCs and halls. Apart from PGP, there's also Utah Residences. Uh, Utah Residences is located in Utah, but from what I hear, it's just reserved for people who apply through NUSU, the NUS Student Union, as well as the families that stay on campus and people who are doing their postgrad. But I also know of year threes who directly apply to UTR and they get in, but my point is that there's rarely first years that go into UTR. Okay, I'm getting really tired, but comparison time. So in terms of food, RCs and halls require you to subscribe to a meal plan with exception of PGP house. There's only two meals per day for both halls and RCs. So these meal plans have a price difference. Halls are like half the price of what you pay for in RCs, but it does kind of show in terms of the quality and the range of choice. For halls, you have to pick between a normal halal and a vegetarian option at the beginning of the semester, and you basically have a mixed rice style of 
options per meal. But for RCs, every day there will be different stalls like Western, Malay, Indian that you get to pick from and generally the quality is just slightly better because I mean you get what you pay for. I would be annoyed if it was just not at least a little bit better. Towards the end of the semester, RCs also give out what we call meal enhancements. So after midterms, they start giving out things like Magnum ice creams, Ben and Jerry's ice creams, cakes. And for student residences, there's no meal plan at all. In terms of the rates of stay, student residences are in between RCs and hall. So hall is the cheapest option, followed by student residences and RCs. So RC is the most expensive, but there are ways that you can get scholarships and bursaries to help lessen the fee. In terms of convenience, depending on which you pick, it would be very convenient to get to your faculty. So if I'm staying in Shears and I'm a business student, it's very convenient for me because it's just right opposite. In terms of CCA commitment, I'm sure we all know by now that halls have a really, really heavy CCA commitment because of the fact that you need it to stay the second year. But for RCs, we do have extracurriculars as well. We basically have interest groups. So the range of interest groups is just that you can choose when you want to go. So if this week I'm feeling a bit busy, then I won't go. There'll be a different range of IGs available and for each hall, there's also a different range of DCAs available. You can stock their Instagrams or their websites to find out more. Really, there's a wide range of student activities that can be part of so, application requirements. For a hall, like I mentioned, they value different things. So for like the sports hall, they would value if you have a very strong sports background. Across the board, I think if you have very strong CCA experience, you would stand a higher chance. But that doesn't mean that if you have none, you should be discouraged and not apply. I think you should still apply. And it does help if you have people who are already in those respective halls that can give you a recommendation or referral. For RC applications, you have to write a little essay of like 500 words. So I'll put up the prompt here. So the application periods, there are multiple. In terms of halls, the application window is actually much longer. But for RCs, okay, here's where I want to make like a very, very big call for action. For anyone who is interested in going to an RC, you need to apply now. Stat, I made the foolish, I don't know, I mean, it all turned out for the better, but I missed the deadline. I had to write in to beg for them to let me apply. And RVRC was the only option left that was still accepting applications. I'm enjoying my time here, so I don't have too many regrets. But let's say I really hate it here. I feel like that would be horrible, right? Like the fact that I end up somewhere that I hate just because I missed the deadline. Don't let that be you. Cultural fit is quite important because you're going to be staying there anyway. You want to have a good time, so do your research on where you want to end up, where you will be most happy and apply. Apply now, please. The application window is until 13th April. It started on the 8th of March, so now's the time, guys. Now's the time. And for USP, the application window is... That's about it for me. Yeah, I... I'm very tired. It's really late at night, so I'm gonna call it at night. And yes, it would be great if you can like, subscribe, comment. I'm really grateful that people find my content helpful. I think I started off doing this very much for fun. Stay sane, stay safe, stay happy.